about like using traditional techniques to represent non-traditional perspectives or non-traditional subjects? To reconsider non-traditional subjects? I don't know. Oh, I wish I could remember. <laughs> George, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? With the podcast, we can always cut, but we cannot add, so be the most you you want yeah. to be. Well, my name is George Morton. I am a contemporary painter and filmmaker, specializing in classical art and cinema these days. I just released a film called Master of Light and I have my own teaching studio called Atelier South in Atlanta, Georgia. We just had lunch with George and his ideas for this Atelier South, it's incredible. It's, it's a teaching. Yeah, it's just a teaching studio ultimately where I'm training uh, young artists and other students like myself who want to study these classical principles that I was fortunate enough to learn. And yeah, it's just, just a space to study and grow and make art, make my own art, maybe give back to the community that helped me. What's that community that helped you? Um, well, I, I was sponsored to go to school by the Atlanta Arts Community or some, some key members and I promised them that when I came home I would bring a lot of my education back and offer it to the community. And so I'm just trying to make good on that promise. Today we are connected because of Laura. Can you tell us how you met Laura? Yeah, Laura Grinning is a gallerist in the Hamptons. And she first, she saw my first piece that seems to still be a gift that keeps giving. Uh, and she also helped me get some of my first press in the, what is it, the, uh, the, the SAG Harbor Express was the uh, paper I, I was on the front page and then New York Times immediately picked it up and the rest was history. You saw your screenplay. When you saw that, what did you feel? Um, yeah, I felt what I anticipated and then it exceeded what I anticipated. And, and so every time I watch it, I feel something else. Uh, but it, it's, it's a surreal feeling. It's hard to put into words. When it comes to creating, do you specifically focus on the creating part? Because would you just call yourself a director, a filmmaker, as well as a painter? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm a student of film for sure. I'm still I'm still growing in that in that discipline. Um, but as far as painting, how do I? You said how do I create, or what is that? Yeah, like for instance, are you specifically on the creating side, and you have the managing people? Or, yeah. or are you doing both? True no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not really good at the business side, to be honest. I, I like focusing on the creative part, um, so it can be difficult. It's like that requires another part of the brain or something. An underlying theme in in the film and, and in America is is race. What was your unique take on this? Because I feel like I'm going to form mine after watching this. My unique take on race. That's that's. Uh, shown in the film mm -hmm. particularly um, just the dual mystery of our own existence and um, this idea of, of um, the negative aspects that you can get from the positive and the positive aspects that you can get from the negative and how it's kind of personified in the human uh, human history in a way and uh, this idea that um, Within trauma, you can find transformation. Within prison, you can maybe find a paradise. Within heaven, you can find a hell. Within dark, you can find light. This this idea of learning to think um, in twos and, and, and seeing 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 things dualistically, because um, we seem to live in a dual world. And I'm basically with the film trying to urge people to transcend duality. Can you describe your time in prison in three adjectives and? What is the likelihood to ever go back? Um, well, likelihood is it's a good one. I still I have dreams about it every night. We're nightmares. Just, I can't get that stuff out of my head. So I don't know. I, I really, part of me doesn't mind going back and just painting. Like, it's like the only place I was able to just paint. And like, I, I secretly fantasize about that, to be honest. And so that's weird. Um, because it's not a nice or pleasant place at all. Um, but I think that kind of speaks to the value of solitude and maybe having that sacred space or being able to create 
maybe what the Greeks would call like a Timenos for yourself. And I, I did that in there. And um, I've been trying to, honestly, I think I'm institutionalized because all I do is duplicate everything I did in there. And it's the only thing that works for me. Do you wake up at 5 a.m.? Everything the same. Wow. I still eat ramen noodles. I still need shower shoes. I still, you know, it's, it's bad. Yeah. I'm, I'm embarrassing myself. No, stop. Now. It's good in the sense of it built a ritual, a routine for you. That's what it did, even, you know, even though it may not have been, you know, uh, it may, may not have been the best scenario to do it, but I was able to you know, turn that into a monastery. Mm -hmm. or, you know. So the three adjectives would be solitude. So three adjectives, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I would, I would definitely say solitude is, is, is one of them. Um, I will just say so, soul searching solitude. That's soul searching it. solitude, I like that. said three words. Hyphenate so. words. And the name of this podcast is called Winners Only Club. And I am so blessed that you are here. What's your definition of a winner and your definition of a loser? Mm. That's a good question because for me, even in defeat, there's valuable lessons learned. And that's my message. So that kind of evens it up for me when it comes to winning and losing. Um, but this idea for me, isn't, it isn't rooted in like a material idea of winning. Um, maybe just the accomplishment of whatever you set out to accomplish. And, and that doesn't, it can be an intangible thing. It can be anything. But I'd say winning is a mind state ultimately and it starts within and so as above so below but as within so without so if you can you know see yourself as a winner maybe on the inside the rest will follow who is the biggest winner in your life the biggest what winner in your life Ooh, biggest winner in my life um, I, i'm just going to say my daughter nuri because she's the biggest everything in my life right and so the sun and the moon yeah absolutely to wrap this up, George, if you were not doing this right now, what would you be doing? If I were not, I'd probably be in some form of ministry where I'm like trying to teach and help raise consciousness on some level. Or another art form, music, you know, something artistic, but also with a slight philosophical, theological bent because I'm very... Yeah, that's a wrap. <laughs> it wasn't too painful. No. Um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me get a better photo with you. With thank you so yeah, much. What? I know it's kind of impromptu, but no I words. I have not been as brave about asking as, as I have this year. Yeah, you right? gotta be brave. Go for it. <laughs> I used to be the same way. It takes courage to do that. So you gotta do that sometimes. Okay, sister. But how do you... I have no shame. Yeah. That's all. Do it out of a sense yes. of hopelessness, okay. and desperation, and loyalty, homelessness. Being poor, you lose pride real quick. Mm -hmm. How does this feel familiar to me? What does this remind me of? I don't know. Oh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> like PBS. <laughs> or mugshot. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, but you can see it on HBO if you can't. Like, I think it's better to see it on the big screen because like, we literally made the lens like art theory, like, like like a painting, mm -hmm. every frame. And so if you could see it on the big screen, that would be great, but it's not actually.